Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah! And have we got a show for you today. Special thanks to our friends over at Capcom for providing a copy of this game and sponsoring this series. And it's time for us to dive back into the courtroom with Turnabout Big Top, Justice for All. Like, comment, and subscribe. It's courtroom time! Yay! December 29th, 9.43 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number five. Hmm. It's Max. Good morning, Max. Hmm. Max! Why are they doing the Steel Samurai song again? I know. M milk? What? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage... I just can't function, sweetie. Wait, it's his pre-stage thing. T stage? Don't worry, there won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I guess. Nick! Max is really nervous. That's understandable, considering, you know, what he's facing. Hey, my sweeties. What, what? You don't think I should fly, do you? Uh... You know, you've got to make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. Uh... Nope, 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 that would be bad. If you want to make an impression, stop wearing your clown outfit inside of a courtroom and dress appropriately! I almost did feel like he looks a little clown-like. Actually, you know, if he dressed like that, he probably would be found guilty. You don't want to look like a delinquent in court. You want to wear, like, a suit or a yeah. dress. aren't you supposed to look yep. more, like, subdued, like, wearing gray and you, stuff? You have to look, like, very, you know, put together. Professional. Yep. We can't be having you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max! Just do what Nick says, and everything will be okay! Oh, sweetie! What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? Actually, I think I would be inclined if I was a judge and he was flying in, I'd think he was pretty cool. Well, this judge is crazy. Oh, yeah. I can see it now, the dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that, and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max, uh. really? No one needs you to fly today! I mean, no one has to fly. Nick, what's with that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that dashing young lawyer flying fabulously. Huh? That'd be so cool. Okay. December 29th, 10 a.m. District Court, number two. It's right after Christmas, December 29th. Yeah, totally. Ooh. Oh, boy. And now the case will continue. Ah! Your Honor, get on with it. I'm sorry, what? Oh, sorry, I just realized uh, that the defendant's name is Billy Bob Johns. I've got to do the judge. It's been so long. So... Well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, Your Honor, he does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild is a big fan of his. Oh. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian. It sounds more friendly. Mm, <laughs> I wonder if that's to our advantage. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, Miss Von Karma, your opening statement, if you please. I hope. You don't bother thinking that you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? Why the full name again? <laughs> that spirit-channeling trial was a sham! I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy! Crazy lady, say what now? Ah! <laughs> it did not count! Do you hear me? She must still be upset about what happened last time. You have no chance. Zero. Zilch. Nada. I am not losing this case. Uh, okay. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of a Von Karma to lose at anything. 
I guess being born with the name Von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty that you are. Me? Guilty? Yeah! <laughs> it will be my ultimate revenge. Uh-huh. But he's not actually on... But yeah, it's I know. not like it'll bring her dad back. There! Opening statement complete. Now, let's hurry and wrap up this waste of time. Very well. You may call your very first witness, Miss Van Gama. Detective Dick Gumshoe, get up there now! Oh, no. Uh, what's up, Court? Sorry to keep you from work. As I'm sure you need every penny that you can earn, Detective. Uh, especially after... Ow! You slashed my... Ah! Cat! Okay. Cat on, cat on Luke's lap. Uh, don't mention it. It's no trouble at all. I've been looking forward to this. Very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the events in question. Say what now? Oh, uh, at your service. All right, detective, you may proceed with your testimony. There we are, the judge is back. Better than ever. Yay. Details of the events. Uh, <coughs> oh, no. Uh, the night of the crime, snow was falling at uh, 9.40, making it uh, pretty cold out, I think. Uh, all the circus performers were gathered in the big top to practice their routines. Uh, the practice session broke around uh, 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15. Oh, Detective Gumshoe's being so hopeful. Yeah. The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. Uh, the cause of death was a blunt force trauma that snapped his vertebrae in his neck. Ouch. Uh. Okay, well, that doesn't sound very fun. Mm. I see. So he was beaten to death. Uh, here's the autopsy report for the victim. Thanks for that, Judge. I, very well, the court accepts this into evidence. Um, autopsy report added to the court record. It helped save my voice, thank you. A blunt object. Hmm. I'll be the court stenographer. There you go. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may now begin your cross-examination. Should I type on a typewriter over here? Oh, you're fine. Oh. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so in the past, it's good to basically call him on everything because he gives yeah. us more details. Uh, the night of the crime, snow was falling until 940. Uh, let me ask you about the snow. Uh, it was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Mm -hmm. Did it pile up? Uh, it wasn't such a big deal. <laughs> Maybe about an inch uh, half on the ground. Uh, the snow froze in place and stayed on the ground until the next day. Hmm, the snow. Let me see. There's got to be more to this. Huh? What's the matter, Nick? Huh? Oh, nothing. I need to take a look at the court record. Mr. Gumshoe, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? Uh, all the circus performers were gathered in the big top to practice their routines, meow. <laughs> Shadow, when you say all the circus performers, who do you mean exactly? Uh, everyone but the dancers and the staff were there. Huh, Regina the Animal Tamer, Mo the Clown, Ben the Ventriloquist, and of course, the defendant, Maximilian, and his victim, the Ringmaster. Oh, mm. I almost forgot. The Regent Tiger thing was there as well. Out of curiosity, what about the circus monkey? Uh, when I was investigating yesterday, he happened to snatch my wristwatch. Oh! Detective, you are welcome to file a police report after these proceedings. Because <laughs> okay. the monkey took his watch. Oh! Uh, the practice session broke around 10 p.m. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Uh, Regina was playing with Regent while Mo went back to his room, uh, tired from work. Uh, Ben the Ventriloquist went to the front gate, absorbed all- absorbed- <laughs> absorbed in his own world, I guess that's not- Yeah. The Ringmaster and Max went off to the Ringmaster's room to talk privately. He's like self-absorbed. Talk privately? Ah, that was awfully suspicious. 
indeed. You wouldn't happen to know what they were talking about, now would you? Uh, if it seems they were negotiating Max's salary. Actually, Max was asking for Regina's hand in marriage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house. I'd like you to be a bit more specific about the events at 10.15, if you don't mind, Detective Gumshoe. Uh, oh, okay. Not a problem, pal. <laughs> we, we've got a witness that told us the- Ah! This is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Watch it, lady. Hmm, all right. Well, just have to revisit that testimony later. Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? Uh, the victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. A wooden box? Uh, that's right. Uh, the victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Carrying the box? It was rather strange wooden box, your honor. What do you mean exactly? Well, it was much heavier than it looked, not to mention it was locked. Locked? You say? Wooden box added to the court record. Hey, I'm a stenographer! Oh, sorry. This may be my only option. I'm actually not so sure what a I'm, stenographer does. <laughs> might as well ask some questions. Hmm. Let's... About the wooden box! Yeah, let's do that. Um, this wooden box. You figure it weighs about 20 pounds, right? Uh, sounds about right. The whole thing is lined with iron. What? Wow. Iron plating? Why do you think it's lined with iron? Uh, I figured they just did it. Ah! <laughs> I think we could do all without your guesses, detective. Stick to what little you actually know. Harsh, lady. Sorry. Uh, suffice to say, the box is really heavy. Much better. You may continue on, detective. Poor gumshoe. Uh, the cause of death was a blunt force trauma that snapped the vertebrae in his neck. I don't like talking about this. <laughs> uh, according to the autopsy report, the murder weapon was a blunt object, right? Uh, you've done your homework, but I just said that. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that it's something like the perpetrator ran off with it. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. Uh, no, no, no. I, I bet he made it disappear with magic. <laughs> there wasn't much that we could go after Gumshoe with this time, huh? He gave us facts as he saw them, but there's got to be more to this. I didn't see anything, Nick. But that's why you're the lawyer and I'm a medium. Hmm. Mm, okay. uh, the night of the crime, snow was falling until 9.40 p.m. Wow, some help you are, Maya. I, I thought know, you were in right? a... Wait, why does she keep saying she's a medium? She's supposed to be your assistant mm -hmm, right now. Mm -hmm. She's doing that job. All the circus performers were gathered. Okay. Uh, the practice session broke at 10 p.m. Okay. The murder itself took place in the plaza. The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. I don't know. The cause of death was a blunt force trauma. Okay, so... I guess we can present... Oh, there's a monkey. Uh, let's go with... This guy. Uh-oh. Your Honor! That statement... Oh, well, I didn't want to do it. Uh, uh whoops, 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 Maybe whoops. we did it at the wrong time. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, what? It does? I don't see anything contradictory. Huh? Oh, really? Haha! <laughs> Objection denied! I don't know why you were randomly choosing profiles, but whatever. Try to think before you make accusations, Mr. Knight. Whoops. It's been a while. Oh, that didn't go so well. Uh, the cause of death was a blunt force trauma. Okay, we've already gathered that. All right, Let's go so back. we're supposed to... We were trying to press all of his statements. There's nothing that we can find. I'm going to try the wooden box again. Uh, the wooden box, because remember it gave us different options. Well, I guessed one thing, but... Uh, that's right! I don't know, the box. Maybe what's inside is more important. Or right, I'm saying there was a list of options. Oh, okay. Sometimes All you right, have to right, right, right. literally tell them everything. Do it again, right, right, right. yeah. Victim was on the box, he was killed. Getting the box, huh? 
Uh, it was a rather strange wooden box, Your Honor. Uh, what do you mean, exactly? Well, it was much heavier than it looked, not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? This may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. See how it gives you a list of options? Well, last so time it actually we... matters what we choose, then? Oh, yeah. So last time we talked about the wooden box itself. Why would the lock matter? I don't think the lock would matter. I think it's the contents. Okay. Um, do you mind telling us what was inside that box, Detective? Does he know? Uh, well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we, uh, took it back to the station and cracked it open. Whoa! All that was inside was this little bottle. Huh? Otto, what is that, Detective? Huh. Exactly what it looks like, Your Honor. It's condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? Uh, it's filled with pepper. Pepper? Pepper? Why in the world was it locked inside of the big box? There was only one little bottle in that huge box? I wonder if it has some sort of special meaning. Small... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Stenographer. Small seasoning bottle added to the court record. There you go. All right, well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we're going to get out of Gumshoe in this case. Oh, well. You mean all we're going to get out of him is that tiny little bottle of pepper? And the wooden box was added to the court. Oh, right. Now that we have wrapped up with the detective, I'd like to call my next witness. Uh, I'm not even off the sand yet. Obviously, but that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. Ouch. I don't know, but wrapped up has such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. Aww. Thank you very much for your service, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down, my friend. Miss Van Kama, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. The puppet guy? Oh, man. She must be talking about Ben the Ventriloquist. No. I wonder if Trillo will show up on the stand as well, Nick. Please, no. Please, no. No. No, 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 oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I'm Please. back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Please state your name and occupation for the record. My name is Trillo Quist. <laughs> I'm an employed as an, an operatic tenor. What? Excuse me, did that puppet just speak? The witness called to the stand was Mr. Benjamin Woodman Ventriloquist. That robe must be cutting off your circulation. I said I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine. I'll grace you with a song. No. Me, 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 me. No. A world of law, exciting and daring, guilt or innocence, <laughs> decided by a judge dressed like a woman. Well, what do you think? <laughs> oh my gosh. Not, not um, dressed as a woman. It had a good rhythm to it, huh, Nick? It's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. <laughs> oh my gosh. Trillo, you know that better than to insult the judge. Ow, ow, ow. Shut up! Just look at your nose! You think you'd have the sense to fix it! Oh my god! It's so ugly, I want to punch it in your face! And off the ch <laughs> shit swelling with help! <laughs> ah. You know, your nose is the reason you'll never be an A-lister! Celebrities much really enjoy seeing everything that flashes into their minds or something. What? What's going on here? I demand order! Know who the witness is! Don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trillo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm worried about- ah! You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. Now, let us proceed. <laughs> what you witnessed. Oh my gosh. Uh... Ah, once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge. I mean, clown. Once he got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. Okay. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He was only one heading out that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Hmm. Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. Oh. 
You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene, and you're sure of that? Without a doubt. He had on his silk hat, cloak, and the dumb white rose on his chest. Uh, how can he mistake someone with that crazy getup and his nose stuck up so high? That's enough. I think we can all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched a clown? That's right. Dress boy. <laughs> oh well, goodness. since you aren't with him, could that mean the clown committed the crime? Hmm, he's got a point. Mm, yes, what a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the culprit. Why's that? Here's absolute proof. It's a silk hat. This was found at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Uh-oh. Ah... Without question, he was wearing the signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for this hat to be at the scene. Hmm. But could well I... done, Miss Van Karma. Your prosecutional skills are unrivaled. Well done. Hmm. She takes a bow. Thank you. Thank you for stating the obvious. Mr. Phoenix Wright, what do you have to say? Okay. I guess she's the boss again today. But that hat could have been planted oh, there. Oh my gosh. All of right. course the murderer is going to want to frame someone else so they don't get caught. Mm -hmm. I once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge. <laughs> uh, once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza. Oh, a cute little puppet. Ah, that's when I saw Max heading towards the scene. He was the only one heading there. <laughs> Hold it. You saw Max and only Max, right, Trillo? That's right. And that makes him the killer. Are we taking a puppet's testimony? There was the only one person headed that way that night. Hmm. That makes quite a bit of sense and makes Max one suspicious character. I don't feel like his testimony is valid in court. I know. There's one... There's more to the story than meets the eye. There's something amiss in this. Hmm. Hmm. Well, there's no proof that it was actually Max, I feel like. Ben only saw Max? Um... We'll go try that one. I don't know. That's a bit strange, don't you think? Eh, if we're wrong, we're wrong. Yeah, whoops. What's strange? Your face! I mean, that you only saw Max. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? Huh? What? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? What else do you suppose this witness could have seen? I well, don't I mean, know. the girl? Probably be the old man walking around. Yeah. Try this. That's the victim! That's correct. If Trillo was at the entrance to the plaza, he would have seen the ringmaster walking as well. <gasps> yeah! Obviously, the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness. Could have even seen him. Anyone with sense could have figured that one out. Say what now? Uh, what are you talking about exactly? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Mm -mm -mm. Isn't that according to the defendant a likely story? If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room, why was he just, as the witness stated, at the scene of the crime? Ah! I see. He could have been lying, I It guess. seems at this stage, I have no reason to doubt this witness's testimony. Mm-hmm. And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. He's right. A brilliant judgment, Your Honor. Now, let's move along with the testimony. Hmm. Hmm. Trillo wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with Regina. <laughs> oh my gosh. Which is probably why Max uh, conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah, I think... St I don't know anymore. I give yeah, up. Yeah, they're, they're one and the same. It's weird. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Um, <laughs> once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge. I mean the clown. Okay. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza. <laughs> That's when I saw Max heading toward the scene of the crime. I feel like he is lying about Max. He was the only one heading that way. Then the police showed up, and the magic boy went away. Um, around what time did the police arrive at the scene? Yeah. Uh, I suppose that would have been around... Hey! What time was it? Wow. Huh? Oh, I think it was around... Ow, ow, ow! I'd say after... Ow! Stop it! 10.30. Practice ended at 10, so you hung around the lodging house the entire time? I, I, I guess that sounds about right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you just stand outside in that weather. Hmm. Well, well, well the, the truth is... Will you shut up, you big dope? Why are you telling him anything extra? We can't you believe? We just stand outside in that weather! Well, oh maybe you were waiting for someone. What? Who said we were waiting for someone? Mr. Phoenix Wright, we oh. can all do without your off-handed theories. But this witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm on to something. Mr. Wright. Who do you suppose the witness was waiting for out in the cold? Regina, obviously. Yep, that's my guess, too. The 16-year-old, your honor. Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. Poor desk. And one person only. He was waiting for the animal tamer. Animal tamer, Regina. Ah! Whoa, what happened to Trollo? You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Whoa. Mm. Is this true, puppet? Well, I, uh, you, you could really ask me that question? I, I, uh... Who cares who I was waiting for that night? What's supported is what I saw! Don't you forget it! Well, 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 the puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right! Oh, boy. Puppet jokes. Oh, my God. Uh... All right. There's obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, moreover, dang it, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid them a second thought. Mm. Ah! <laughs> nice, nice puppet voice. That makes, ah, uh, what? What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. Did they? However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, then you must accept that there is a high likelihood that... He could have missed someone else other than... Ah! Hm. There's absolutely no proof that the witness was waiting for the animal tamer. Oh, yeah? Um... I guess you got me! What? All right, all right! I'll spill the beans this time. It's true. I was waiting for Regina. Yeah! Wow. <laughs> Don't volunteer things. Mr. Ventriloquist, tell us the truth this time, and I mean the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Where were you? Were you or were you not waiting for a Regina at the entrance to said lodging house? I was! <gasps> I was waiting to propose to her! Oh my god! You were what? Waiting to propose? That's disturbing! Uh, um. Love between a 16 year old. What's and the a matter? Puppet. You think that humans have a monopoly on marriage? That matter of a puppet marriage is not under review in this case. You're the. Ouch. You're oh the judge! Gosh. I mean, look at your horrible outfit! Yeah! <laughs> Thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. <laughs> About the proposal. Uh -huh. 
Ah, don't be surprised that I was gonna propose to her! I even had something to give her! I kept it in my pocket, waiting for a chance to propose and give it to her! Of course! I also had it in my pocket that night! It was a present for her! In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket! <laughs> you were going to propose! You! A puppet! Don't be so obtuse! Just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love! I guess you're right. Um... Just because I'm old doesn't mean I can't... Couldn't propose to her too! It would be, exactly! It would be really weird though if you did. His honor is looking a little less than honorable right now, considering th she's 16! I thought the judge was married. Alright, Mr. Height, please continue with your cross-examination. What? With that sigh at the end? <laughs> He's like, this puppet is insane. Uh... Don't be surprised that I was gonna propose! I even had something to give her! Okay. What was it exactly that you planned on giving her? You know exactly what I was gonna give her, you numbskull! The only thing I could find that would match Regina's beauty! Answer the question! What was it? You're gonna die when you hear this! It's an engagement ring! <laughs> engagement <laughs> ring?! Wow, those two nearly fell out of their chairs. Yep, a puppet was going to propose to a human. Mr. Phoenix Wright's jokes has gone too far. Time for this to end right here. Whip the puppet. Francisca's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that will be probably shut someone up for a long time. Push on anyway. There we go. Pain equals bad or push on. It may be something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. The first time that a puppet has ever... Pro ah! <laughs> I advise you to cut this argument short, Phoenix. Yowie! <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Specifically about the engagement of writing. I like to stick to the facts, not sociology. You are sure to enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in a black bathrobe. That's his outfit for being the judge. I plan on giving an engagement ring to Regina. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. okay. An engagement ring? Aha! Uh -huh. It was actually a diamond-shaped stone cut from glass. Even more brilliant than the real thing. I think Regina's gonna love it! Wait, it's not made out of diamond, it's cut from glass. Wait, it's just a ring? It is glass, it's made out of glass. That means it's only worth like three dollars. Wow. What's the matter, Nick? Besides the puppet being a cheapskate? Well, there's gotta be something I can catch him on. Hmm. So there's no way Regina would say yes. I mean, even, oh my gosh. I don't know, the puppet's killing my voice. Of course! I, I hid it I, I, in I my it. pocket! Okay, fine. Of course <laughs> I, I had it in my pocket that night! I tried. It was a present! In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I still got it in my pocket. Okay. Um... I didn't even know he had pockets. He doesn't even have pants. I felt... I, I don't... Yeah, he, I he has no like, pants! I feel like his pants are that guy's arm. It doesn't... Nothing of what he's saying makes any sense. Yeah, but we found a ring. How can he have it in his... Just try this. Trillo, do you mind if I show you something? What is it? What are you talking about, Aaron? Uh, looks like they're gonna double team me now. <sighs> um, do you recognize this ring? Ah, uh, that's 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 mine! Give it back, thief! Thief! Oh my gosh! Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've got it in my pocket! <clears throat> Why, <laughs> then, do I have it right here? Ah! There you go. What is going on here? I thought the puppet was going to propose. That's, that's, uh, Ben, say something! Uh, don't put me on the spot like that. I found this in Money's room. Money's room? You mean a room they put money, like a bank vault? Ah, uh -huh. the filthy 
Deadly Monkey is gonna get what's coming to him! Oh my gosh. Mr. Quest, I would prefer if you avoided slandering innocent flats in my court. Well, Your Honor, money really is a monkey in every sense of the word. I see. Well, then, don't threaten the monkey. Money is likes to go after the shiniest things that he can find and gather them up. Mm. Shiny things? Like your bald head. Oh my god. Trillo, when was this ring stolen from you? Well, I, I suppose it was. Th that time, y you know, the, 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 that night of the crime. What did you just say? Details, details, I need more details. Well, uh, it, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Uh, right, right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, well um, I, I, I guess I might be able to say that. The, the, the ring might have, well, it, it, it could have been, t uh, taken around that time. Monkey! Oh, oh! Ah, yo, monkey! Ah, monkey! I don't know. I'm really bad at monkey voices. Ben, what's with you? Ah, oh, whatever. It was nothing to do with anything, especially not who committed the murder! It's not for you to decide what has to do with what. Now, Trillo, back to the topic at hand. I haven't admitted a thing! Not I, Miss Trillo Quest! Hmm. Uh, what did you do when the ring was taken? Uh, you know exactly what I did. I chased after that mi ah, chased after that ring snatching monkey money. Oh my gosh! But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? Ah, uh, it's all this so loafy fool's fault, Ben. Oh my god! While he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. That is indeed an incredible shame. Oh my god! Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. This courtroom is nuts. Proves an important point? What point could that possibly be? Ben doesn't exercise enough. Obviously, that one Mr. Benjamin Woodman is lacking in the area of exercise. What? I'm shoddy, what? Uh, uh, <sighs> this, this is clear from the testimony we've just listened to. He was too slow and awkward to catch a monkey fleeing through the snow. What? This revelation doesn't seem to be registering too well around the courtroom. <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe you should leave the courtroom drama for video games and rethink that one, Nick. Um, okay. Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Proves an important point? What point could that possibly be? Ben's testimony has a flaw. Yeah! That one. There's a huge contradiction in the witness's testimony. Contradiction? That's what I just said. The witness just testified the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the Monkey. When the witness was off chasing Money, there was no one watching the plaza anymore. What is the meaning of all this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Gotcha. Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that... There is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's true. That's where I'm going with this little theory, which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Oof. Yeah, he didn't. He wasn't watching the scene the whole time. All right, very interesting. Oh, come on. Well, then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What now? Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vigilant ventriloquist? Um, the puppet is punching him in the face. Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying. He was blinded by his rivalry with Max. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie just to get the dork face in trouble. He's not even worth it. I saw no doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who saw what on that night. Ah, 
I told you so many times you'd think you'd know my story's not changing! You've already changed your story, Stick Boy, <laughs> and I'm sure it will change some more. Yep. Where there is one lie, there is usually many more behind it, Nick. That's right, Maya. Exactly. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah! <laughs> this can be another testimony with a puppet. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. I am enjoying your puppet voice, but I know it's causing you pain. Oh, I'm sorry. oh, it is. It is. I'll give you what I was waiting for, Regina. But that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max. He showed up right after, and I'd been waiting there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. Then maybe it wasn't Max. Ah. I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw him at Max at the scene. There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those... Three ridiculous symbols! Ow! Somebody posing as Max, then. Another Steel Samurai thing? Ah, uh, why not? Hmm. So that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max? That's right! Money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max! Ow! Then money snatched the ring and you went chasing after him, right? How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about... Uh, I suppose five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived at the scene in that five-minute stretch. Your husband has split personalities. Mr. Knight, please proceed with your cross-examination. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Witnessing Max. Cross-examination time. I'll give you that. I, s I was waiting for Regina, okay? But that doesn't change the fact I saw Max. He showed up right after I'd been waiting there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't acknowledge my presence! Ugh. You... So you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. You must enjoy asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning, good afternoon during the day, right? And it's <laughs> obvious that I'd say good night to someone at night! Uh... <laughs> right, what, Ben? You got some nap? Let me guess. That's not it, Trillo. You say good evening at night. I I I'm sorry, Trillo. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, poor Ben. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you kept your ventriloquist act outside of this courtroom and stop beating up that poor defenseless man. Impossible. Performer lives and breathes his performances. I'm a method actor! You should know better! <laughs> oh my gosh. There's gotta be something wrong with this bit of testimony. Trillo's evening greeting. Ben's half the comedy act. Okay. I'm gonna go with this greeting. It's what could possibly greeting. go wrong? Isn't that a bit strange to you? What? Well, if you hate Max so much, why would you bother being nice to him? It strikes me as somewhat strange. Why would it strike you as strange? Exactly! How is it strange to be cordial to one of your co-workers? Well, if it was simply just being cordial to a co-worker, I would understand... Yo! <laughs> Maybe you should think of having some proof before your lips start flapping next time, Phoenix. Proof is everything in the world! You should have learned that back in grade school! Don't you dare bring up grade school! Ah, uh, there's no reason that Trillo would say everything nice to Max. But how do I uh, go about proving that with the evidence? Loving is everything in this world! But I'm sure you already learned that one, Nick. I guess I can give it a shot, so we gotta present the broken bottle. Bluffing? The witness would resume his testimony. Uh... I'm absolutely sure it was Max! Come on back! All right! You're gonna say good evening! All right! Sorry. Good evening. Eat bottle, jerk! Objection. Trillo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, to be exact. It wasn't that big of a deal, it was just an argument. Disagreement at most, ow. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head with a bottle. Yeah. Yeah! Nice one, Luke. That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? What? What is the meaning of this? Is that an administration admission of assault and battery? <laughs> Yo! Before we handle that, 
We should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first! The truth is that on the day of the crime, the defendant and witness had a huge fight. There's uh, absolutely no way they could have suddenly become cordial that evening. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on the stand. There's no way a puppet this lewd would just go and say good evening to his rival. Yeah! Are you saying this witness is lying? Oh yeah. Then he'll try to- then that he is trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I didn't tell a single lie! Honestly, I just- That's enough from you, puppet! Mr. Wright! Yes, your honor. Let's clarify his testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about the witness who you actually saw that night? Hmm. Uh, well, I'd say that he saw a different person. That's what I believe. You think because he saw he someone else? He saw somebody with a hat, unless he made up the whole thing and he didn't see anyone. We'll go with a different person. Survey says... Of course he saw the defendant. How could he miss Maximilian Galactica? Yeah! You said that Trillo would have no reason to greet Max if they had met that night. You said that, did you not, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Uh... Ah uh, is not the correct answer! Yes, it is. Mr. Wright, I'm afraid that Ah uh, has just landed the defense a penalty. What? Oops. Foiled again. Nick, you've got to think about these things a bit more and just give it another shot. Uh... Just try your best! Yeah, I know, and by the looks of things, I've got to hurry up. Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about the witness and who he actually saw that night? Uh... I... He saw a different person. I, I thought yeah. that's what I picked. I think it was my belief that the witness did indeed see someone that night. It was just someone else. That's who he said good evening to. What kind of theory is that? Pretty good one. The correct one. Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. What? what? If he had truly met Max that evening, there would have been no greeting at all. Which means there's only one proper answer. The person the witness saw that night was not Maximilian. That is why Trillo made the effort to greet whoever it was that he saw that evening. Or, good evening, as he put it. Ah! What in the world? You! Uh, would the defense kindly explain who it was that Trillo saw that evening? Probably the old man. Yeah. Ooh, we are so close to losing this case. Yeah, I know, Consider right? the ill temper this witness is, there's only one person he would greet. It must be Regina! It's Regina, right? She's so cute! No, Your Honor, it's not Regina. <laughs> it, if it was Regina, Trillo would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yes. I suppose you've got a point there. But would she have accepted it, though? It was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? You are correct. It was indeed Russell Berry, the ringmaster. The person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster, Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trillo. Isn't that correct? Uh, <laughs> Answer the question! <laughs> Whoa. Something's going down. Order! How do you respond to this puppet? Wait a second! Well, at first, I thought it was the old man. But, 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 but once I was better look at him, it was obviously Max! Mm. Oh, this is a circus. Yeah. I think it's high time that we clear the air about this question. Mr. Quest obviously witnessed a single person in the area of the plaza that evening. The problem is identifying exactly who that person was. Mm. Was it Maximilian? Or was it the ringmaster? The prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols. All right, this is getting old. Come on, man. You gotta remember them by now. Wait, Rose. Here we go again. All together now. Yo! 
Yes, yes, we know. The silk hat, cloak, and white roses. A silk hat and a cloak? Huh, anyone could wear them. They'd even look good on me. What was that? Well, the witness has an endlessly repeated that he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we really know it was Max? Yeah. It could have been someone else dressed up as him. Mm-hmm. In his outfit. Possibly even Russell Berry. What? All right, Miss Van Karma. Uh, you have a clear evidence that the person the witness saw was indeed the defendant? Well, I... I don't think so. If that's the case, then it's impossible for me to make a clear judgment on this point. Yes, I think we finally won a point in this one. Ha <laughs> ha! Hmm, ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh. that is very unfortunate. Uh? You are just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What do you mean by that? You merely established that one thing from this witness. You established that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on your effort, but... But? Who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. Huh? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide, beyond a shadow of a doubt, an answer to that question, an evidence that clearly establishes one thing. That there is one, no one other than Maximilian Galactica, responsible for this crime. Oh, boy. Very well. The court will take a ten-minute recess. During that time, I request that the prosecution prepare their next witness. Court is now in uh, recess as I go grab a bento. <laughs> yeah, bento box. Indeed. Oh, thank God. Oh, that puppet almost killed me. Oh. Yay for Kiwi. Never again! <laughs> Alright, thanks so much for watching, people! Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, or else! And we'll see you with more Ace Attorney tomorrow here on K-Wing's Let's Plays. And uh, it was fun. Until then, God bless and happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching. your tongue puppet. Wait, woman! <laughs>